real booty bandits in prison. Mm -hmm. So that's true. People, this is what y'all been asking me to ask them. Explain it to us. I yeah. Um, yeah. There's a, uh, it's, it's uh, rarely physical. Um, it's rarely like a, a, what you would consider a classical rape. It's usually more of an extortion. I knew a man named Gummy. <laughs> He's got to be dead by now. He's got to be dead by now. We called him Gummy. He was in his 80s, right? In uh, Sterling, Colorado, Sterling Correctional Facility. He was doing all day long. Uh, I think he had done something crazy. I think he had a gay lover and buried him or something like that. So Gummy's like this 80-year-old white dude with no teeth, right? Well, Gummy was the, in, the, the intake, yeah, right? In shape, in shape, homie, been, been doing this, right? So what Gummy was the intake officer, right? The, not the officer, the intake, uh, like inmate coordinator, whatever. So he got a list of everybody coming through the door. And that list would have your charges on. Them. So Gummy would find all the new fish because you could tell they fish because they numbers. Their numbers are brand new. So, okay, we got new fish, new fish, new fish. Oh, here's a sex charge. Here's a sex charge. Here's a sex charge. So he get him a little list of the sex charge kids, right? And then whenever they come in, he pony up to them. Hey, man, you know, uh, I know what you're in here for. It's okay. I, I can help you. Um, I, I, I got the same type of case. I know a bunch of legal stuff, da, 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 right? He would get, he would work these dudes to get and trust him and to like showing him their paperwork and da, 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 da. And then once he had everything he needed to truly extort him, he would start extorting these fools for sex. Right. But the cold part about it was, is he was telling them, you're going to have sex with me or chew me up. You're going to chew me up. Right. Or I'm going to tell everybody that you're a sex offender. Right. So he's over here getting head. But the kicker was everybody knew who the sex offenders were because they was the brand new dudes hanging out with the 80 year old weirdo. So we already knew. <laughs> Right. So it was stupid. It was stupid. And he'd have so he'd have like the, the, there'd be like two or three little little young 20 year olds hanging out with this 80 year old white dude. And so everybody knew what was going on. So we'd be sitting there watching and you'd see him and he'd tell one of them, give him the sign or something. You know what I mean? And you'd see one of them go up in there and then you'd see Gummy go up in there to maybe get some head. And we'd wait like two minutes for him to get started and have one of the little homies go by and kick the shit out of the door. You know what I mean? Scared. <laughs> the hell out of them you know what i mean <laughs> yeah homie predators are real predators are real dog how, so how so how so okay the gummy guy how prevalent is it because to people like us right like people at my university they act like it's like 10 percent of the prison population that are booty bandits like how many booty bandits do y'all have to worry about is it no not 10 percent are booty bandits um i would say that's probably accurate about how many percentage participate in homosexual activity. Wow. I bet you that's true. Um, no, I, I, don't, I don't think that many are, are actually not. I mean, it, it depends also which prisons you go to. You know what I mean? There's prisons where it's tolerated more than others. You're not going to get away with it in, in like a camp or something like that, like a minimum camp. Mm -hmm. If you start trying to extort people for sex, if you're... If you're able to extort people for sex, it's because they are in a position where their life is possibly in danger, right? If you're going to a minimum camp, your life's probably not in danger. Your, your crime's probably not that serious, and the people around you are on the tail end of their sentences, or they've been around a long time, and they don't cause problems. That's why they're in the camp. You know what I mean? So it matters. We're out here, we have five tiers, one, two, three, four, five. Five is super max, where you don't, you're locked down all day long. They handcuff you, take you to the shower. Uh, that's it. You know what I mean? That's all you basically get. Uh, four is closed, what they call closed. These are people with life extended sentences, life and extended sentences, um, lots of violence, lots of gang bangers, uh, level threes encompass all the privates and many of the, uh, many of the state prisons out here, they're just called mediums. And then you have two tiers of camps. You have minimum and minimum restricted minimum and MR. Um, and they all go off a point system. They're all registered off a point system. Um, so 
who you encounter, the seriousness of the individuals that you encounter is going to be based a lot upon your points. Mm. Okay. You're You're really only going to experience this in threes and fours because in fives, nobody can get to you. Mm. Right. Mm. Ones and twos, nobody's going to do that to you. Fives, nobody can get to you. Wow. So what about these? uh, It's a lot of, at least where I live at, I hear a lot about female guards having relations with the prisoners. Are y'all knocking them down like that? Is it? Oh, bro, tell it to us. We want Yeah. Yeah. It happens all the time. They get walked out all the time. I never got laid in prison. I, I sucked on some titties. That was it. I, I rubbed on her ass, sucked on her titties a little bit. She was a big girl. She was bigger than me. She was easy 300 pounds, but, um, and I think she had a wig. I'm pretty sure it was a wig. She was an older white lady. I'm pretty sure it was a wig. But um, no, nah, but a, a bunch of the homies, yeah, it, it, it happens. They get walked off all the time. The, the, the females get walked off all the time. That's where the majority of the cell phones come from. Whenever you end up with cell phones in prison, uh, you know, things that you shouldn't have, it, it's usually from the guards. Mm. That's yeah. interesting. That is super interesting. So to regular people, when they hear these charges, they really don't believe it. But it's true. These, these female guards are having relations. Okay. Wow. That is crazy. Women like attention. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Women like attention. And 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 you gotta figure there's dudes in there. They got nothing better to do all day, but just think about, you know what I mean, how to do whatever, whatever their focus is, whatever they're focused on. They got nothing better to do. I know a dude who killed, we could probably find this. I bet you I guarantee it made the story, I made the news story. I know a black German dude who he spoke fluent, fluent German. He was a, a, a army brat and he killed a cop in Colorado Springs. This is going to be maybe, I don't know. When, when did I get with maybe 2008, something like that. And he got out the car on a DUI and pulled the 40 cal and put it right here, right in between the cop's vest, you know, like between the plates in the front and the plates in the back and just let it off. Wow. And he had grown up on an army base in Germany. And he had all the schematics from like Black Hawk helicopters and all of this in his head. And he would make them out of toilet paper. We were in in solitary confinement together. And Mm -hmm. so he would go into his cell and then I'd come out and there was a little area, but we all shared an area, a common area, but there'd only be one person out at a time. So I would come out and there would be a, a, a model Black Hawk helicopter, two feet long, modeled out of toilet paper or like a B-52, or all of the planes that he had seen on this air base. You know what I mean? This is just one person, and everybody has something they're fixated on. Everybody has a way to do their time, you know? So if somebody's, if they're they're fixated on a woman, they're going to get her, you know? If she's gettable, that's, that's what it comes down to. If she's willing to, if she's willing to cross that boundary, Right. Is, is she willing to even let her guard down and let you in? Wow. Now, are the cops as crooked as people say? Like, how dirty are cops in prison? Not out here. I wouldn't say cops are dirty in general. I mean, and, and, and not in a bad way, but um, uh, uh, imagine. Imagine a police union that didn't look out for itself. That wouldn't be much of a union, would it? Right. Right? How much trust would you have? Not much. So I I, I don't blame the cops. The cops got to do what they got to do. You know, all this stupid shit going on now with the cops and, and the cops beating people up. I mean, it's bad. But you knew whenever I was growing up, you had to stand up. Okay, if you run from the cops, they're going to rough you up. If you really run from the cops and make them run, they're going to rough you up some more. If you swing on them, they're going to whoop you. And if you go for their gun, they're going to beat the fuck out of you and tase you. This was just standard growing up. We knew what we had coming. Now, because it's almost like the, the rest of the public has been hipped to the agreement that criminals had with the cops, and they're appalled at the situation and the criminals are smart enough to take the side of the people and say, yeah, we're appalled too. 
right? <laughs> and act as if you know, but, but but yes, the cops the cops are brutal. If you piss them off, they're brutal. They they have a license to kick your ass. Cops have a license to kick your ass. Um, the they didn't kill people a lot whenever I was growing up. There was I can remember I remember Paul Childs, a little black kid in Denver that they killed who had autism. Mom called the cops to the house, was like, come help this fool, please. He was like 15 years old, had a knife. They showed up and shot him. You know what I mean? It, it, that was like, it's like, come on, you know, but um, it's been so thrust into the spotlight now uh, with George Floyd and everything. And it is horrendous. I mean, some of these things, the, the, the video from George Floyd is horrendous. The, the cops do that and cops that is standard procedure i hate to tell them that but that is standard procedure it sucks but yeah they put their knee on you uh, if you resist yeah that's it, it. <laughs> you know i mean it's what they do and i've been in that position before you know what i mean where you can't breathe like that and and luckily i didn't it didn't go that far i don't know why it went that far with him it's horrible <laughs> you know what i mean i've seen the video i've seen the full video it's crazy um i never experienced anything like that um they beat the crap out of my homie a but he admitted he told us he's like yeah I, I went for his gun <laughs> he was super drunk and went for his gun we went and seen him and they dropped charges on him that's how it used to be this was like in 2002 right wow. we go we go see him in a hospital and his head is the size of a pumpkin and i was like and he was like i was like, what happened he's like i went for his gun and i was like they're not arresting you he's like no they dropped the charges <laughs> hey, they rock